This is the day the Lord has made. Let us continue to rejoice and be glad in it. Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus, I just want to thank you, Lord, for this day. I want to thank you for this opportunity to be able to teach for you. In the mighty name of Jesus, I thank you that you give me the words to say, not the words that I want to say. I thank you, Holy Spirit, for teaching this lesson. The same Holy Spirit that took around 1,800 years to write the Bible will also teach this lesson today in the mighty name of Jesus. I ask that you separate man and that spirit takes over in the mighty name of Jesus. Every plan that the enemy has will fail Amen. and fail miserably. And all things work out good to those who love God, especially us, called for his will and purpose. In the mighty name of Jesus we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless everybody and good morning. Today's lesson is in the Sunday School Manual, page 66. Today's central thought is God's word is forever settled and will prosper. Amen. And the title of, the, of today's uh, first half is called the, Excell the Excellency of God's Word, Part 1. Amen. We're going to learn today on who we are in God, what the Word means to us, how we are to use His Word, and what the Word can do in our lives and other people's lives that we speak it into. In the mighty name of Jesus. When I first read this lesson, the first Bible scripture that popped in my mind was Hebrews 4.12. And no coincidence that that scripture is also in the lesson. And it's for the Word of God is alive. It is active, sharper than any two-edged sword. It penetrates even to dividing the soul and spirit joints and marrow. It judges the thoughts and attitudes of the heart. Only God's word. When man gives you a word and it's about a, a worldly advice, it can may touch you in a certain way, but it's easily forgotten. It easily goes away. But God's word has a way of piercing right through your heart, right through the bone. The marrow is where the life of the bone is. So God's word penetrates through everything in your life. Amen. And you know it because you feel it in the pit of your stomach. When someone says something to you, and it's, and it's a word of deliverance, sometimes we would speak in during the men's meeting, it feels like you get punched in your stomach sometimes because it's like, whoa. Because God's word is active. It's alive. Amen. The same Amen. Holy Spirit that hovered over the waters and created the earth, is the same Holy Spirit that's alive here today. The Word of God is Jesus, and the Holy Spirit moves through His Word. Amen? Amen? One thing that we should know as children of God is that when someone speaks to you, especially the Holy Spirit, He will always do so in the Word of God. He will give you Scripture, or she will give you Scripture to back it up. And that's how you know it's of God and not of man. Amen? Amen. Today's first text is in Psalm 119. Amen. Could I just have someone please read? Read that. I will delight myself. 
things our sister was reading today is so powerful. And I just want us to, to like absorb what we're reading. When you walk in the ways of the Lord and you live a righteous lifestyle, the Lord is going to continuously work in you, work through you, and also work on you. As you're doing the work of the Lord, and as we heard this morning, that you don't look back, but you keep your eyes focused on the kingdom. That's what the word of God does. It keeps you focused. We're not going to look to the left or the right. The word constantly reminds us of who we are in Jesus Christ. How we need to march forward. How we need to look past certain things in our life that tries to distract us. The Lord, when you, when you are a child of God, he's constantly renewing you with the word. So in other words, there is some things in our life that may be wrong. Or maybe not right. But when you meditate on the word, like Mama Gladys said this morning, when you meditate on the word day and night, the Holy Spirit will reveal to you things in your life that are not right. And he may do so either by his word at that moment, or he'll have someone close to you who's a child of God to speak it towards you or to correct you. Iron sharpens iron. The Lord is aware of you constantly when you're doing his work. And that's why the word of God is meant to purify us. Pastor often... Uh, preaches on how like pure gold doesn't just become pure overnight. It has to be put through a purification. So just as we child of God, as you're walking and working in the Lord, He's going to start to remove certain things in your life that are not right so that you can be pure. But we have to keep our mind focused on Him. Our mind is focused on the Word. Amen? Today's song is very important that we sang. It's the Word is a lamp under my feet. When the word of God is the lamp that's under your feet, it, it guides the way for you to go. When I was a little boy, I don't know if they do it anymore, when you went into a movie theater and you couldn't see, there would be a guy in the back with a light to show you, hey, you gotta go here. And you would follow the light because if you didn't follow the light, you'd trip and fall because it's so dark you can't see. That is what the word of God does in your life. He helps lead and guide you. He doesn't lead nor forsake you. That light of the word of God is going to show you exactly where and how to go. Amen? Amen. Thank you, sister. Deal bountifully with thy servant, that I may live and keep thy word. Open thou my eyes, that I may behold wondrous things out of thy law. I am a stranger in the earth. Hold not thy commandments from me. My soul breaketh for the longing that it hath unto thy judgments at all times. Thou hast rebuked the proud that are cursed, which do err from thy commandments. Remove from me reproach and contempt, for I have kept thy testimonies. Princes, princes also did sit and speak against me, but thy servant did meditate in thy statutes. Amen. Hold on one second, sister. Sorry. One of the things, or well, one of the many things that the Lord hates, and He actually says He detests it, is an arrogant eyes in a prideful way. When you stay in the Word of God and you stay in the Spirit of the Lord, He helps keep the flesh under control. He keeps the flesh so that it doesn't act up. So if we don't stay in God's Word every day, if we don't meditate on, if we don't meditate on His Word day and night, we don't worship the Lord, we don't pray to the Lord, we don't seek His face. The flesh is always going to come out of you, unfortunately. And that's why we need the word every day like our sister is preaching today. You need the word to constantly renew you, to get rid of your ways, to keep your flesh under subjection. Even Paul preached. He, he often dealt with his flesh. He goes, I hate this flesh of mine. I, I find myself doing the things I know, I know on, that I shouldn't be doing, but I find myself doing them anyway. Even Paul, as anointed as he was, he had to stay into the Word of God. He had to constantly meditate on the Word of God. Because if we don't, we're going to start to go off on our own path. And that's why, like the song said, you'll be a light underneath my path. We need the Word of God to constantly renew us. Amen? Amen. Thank you, sister. 24. My testimonies were all spoken against me. Yes, sister. Thank you. My soul cleaveth unto the dust. Quicken thou me according to thy word. I have declared my ways, and thou heardest me. Teach me thy statutes. Make me to understand the way of thy precepts. So shall I talk of thy wondrous works. Amen. My soul melted for heaviness. Strengthen thou me according unto thy word. 
Remove from me the way of lying, and grant me thy law graciously. I have chosen the way of truth. Thy judgments have I laid before me. I have stuck unto thy testimonies. O Lord, put me not to shame. I will run the way of thy commitments, and thou shalt enlarge my heart. Teach me, O Lord, the way of thy statutes, and thou shalt keep it unto the end. Give me understanding, and I shall keep thy law. Yeah, I have observed it with my whole heart. Make me to go in the path of thy commandments, for therein do I delight. Incline my heart unto thy testimonies, and not to covetousness. Amen. Turn away mine eyes from beholding vanity, and quicken thou me in thy way. Establish thy word unto thy servant, who is devoted to thy fear. Turn away my reproach, which I fear, for thy judgments are good. Behold, I have longed after thy precepts, quicken me in thy righteousness. Let thy mercies come also unto me, O Lord, even thy salvation according to thy word. So shall I have wherewith to answer him that reproacheth me, for I trust in thy word. And take not the word of truth utterly out of my mouth, for I have hoped in thy judgments. So shall I keep thy law continually forever and ever. And I will walk at liberty, for I see thy precepts. I will speak of thy testimonies also before kings, and will not be ashamed. I will delight myself in thy commandments, which I have loved. My hands also will I lift up unto thy commandments, which I have loved, and I will meditate in thy statutes. Amen. Hold on one second. Thank you, sister. As a child of God, if we con constantly ask the Lord to renew us, and he, when he does correct us, and we do have the right frame of mindset that that correction is to better us, the flesh would love to reject a correction. The flesh likes to say, well, who are you, Brother Montelli, to correct me? Who are you? But I know and respect him as a child and man of God. So when he says something to me, and I know it's the word of God, I'm going to grasp that thing instead of reject it. And it's very important that we continue to have that, that mindset that we are constantly children of the Lord. I'm not an adult in the Lord. I'm always learning. I'm always a baby in Jesus Christ. I always need him as my source. And he uses people that are around you. And that's why... We, as Christians, we have to constantly know who we are surrounded by. We can't be hanging out with friends of the world that are going to clubs and bars or cursing and talking about things that are not of God. When you surround yourself with holy spiritual people, the Holy Spirit will talk to you through those vessels. If you hang around people of the world, the devil is going to speak to you through those vessels. So that's why we have to be constantly aware of who's around us. When you walk in righteousness, when you, work in, when you walk in the Word of God, you have to constantly surround yourself with godly things. And that's what this psalm is about. It's asking God, please remove from me anything that is not of you. I need you to remove these things. I need you to have someone tell me, hey, brother, you're doing this wrong. And it doesn't matter where it comes from. And you have to have that attitude that, you know what, the Lord is working me towards my salvation. He's making me 24 karat pure gold. Amen. We walk around when we first get saved, we're all dirty, filthy rags. Our goal is to become more and more like him and less and less like ourselves. When you're following that path, when you're following the light of the Lord, he's constantly renewing you. The Bible says that he is the vine and I am the branch. The source of the vine, the source of the power in me, in you, is Jesus Christ. And just like a farmer who prunes a tree or a plant, there's parts of the plant that starts to, it wants to grow where it wants to grow. But the farmer who loves and cultivates the plant knows where to prune it, knows where to turn it towards the light so that it can grow better. Even the plant doesn't know. It's just going to grow all different ways. It's going to be like a wild weed. But, but when someone loves you, when Jesus Christ loves you, he's going to constantly... He sees that there's a part of you that's going in the wrong direction. When you read the word of God, it's going to prune that thing off. It's going to throw it into the fire. And he's going to make you better each and every day. Amen? Amen. Amen. 49. Remember the word unto thy servant, 
upon which thou hast caused me to hope. This is my comfort and my affliction, for thy word hath quickened me. The proud have had me greatly in derision, yet have I not declined from thy law. I remember thy judgments of old, O Lord, and have comforted myself. Horror hath taken hold upon me because of the wicked that forsake thy law. Thy statutes have been my songs in the house of my pilgrimage. I have remembered thy name, O Lord, in the night, and have kept thy law. This I had, because I kept thy precepts. Thou art my portion, O Lord. I have said that I would keep thy words. I entreated thy favor with my whole heart. Be merciful unto me according to thy word. I thought on my ways and turned my feet unto thy testimonies. I made haste and delayed not to keep thy commandments. The bands of the wicked have robbed me, but I have not forgotten thy law. At midnight I will rise to give thanks unto thee because of thy righteous judgments. I am a companion of all them that fear thee and of them that keep thy precepts. The earth that, O oh Lord, is full of thy mercy. Teach me thy statutes. Amen. Just one really quick second. In, in verse 61, it says, Though the wicked bind me with ropes, I will not forget your law. As a child of God, the enemy is always going to try his best, especially when you're doing the work of God. He's going to try to trip you up. He's going to try to entangle you with something. As, as the preacher was saying this morning, sometimes the people of the world will, will, will take a photo of you and say, This is who you are. This is who you are. Remember who you to preach. And that's what you say. Well, the Word of God says... The Holy Spirit says, I am a new creature in Christ Jesus. And I have a little bit of a testimony for that one that the Lord just reminded me of. When I first got saved, I didn't know anything about Facebook and Instagram. I wasn't really knowledgeable in those things. And I opened one up to be connected to the ministry that I was in at the time. I was the teacher of a children's ministry. So everybody in the church started asking. My wife told me how to do it. They were friend request that you would accept them. All the kids, all the kids that were teaching that would range from as little as three or four and some of them were up until like 14 or 15 years old. And because I was a little ignorant in the way that the Facebook works, there was people that start to see you from 10 years ago, they want to be your friend. And you're like, okay, yeah, sure. You know, I, I didn't know. So about four or five months into being teaching the children, somebody and I, I, don't, I don't remember who it was, it's not important. They posted a picture of me on Facebook when I was in the flesh and I was drunk on a beach laying on the floor. And they took my picture with no shirt on. And now all the kids in the ministry could see what I did. Now, the world would want me to run away in embarrassment and say, hey, that's not me, that wasn't me. But I had to embrace it and say, yes, this is me, I'm covered in the blood of Jesus. I, like the preacher said this morning, the enemy is going to try to bind you up. And how embarrassing could that be? It could really cause you to trip and stumble. But if you keep it focused on the word of God, and that's why you need the light. You, the flesh wants to turn around and take revenge and blast that person or immediately remove that object so no one could see it. But the Lord says that all things work out good to those who love God, especially me called for my will and purpose. Now it gave me a message. It gave me a substance to hold on to and say, yeah, that was me. You see the terrible mess I was in? You see how embarrassed I was? You see how disgusting I looked? And not only that, but you see the person who's trying to glorify the devil and the life that I used to have? And it gives you inspiration to preach against such things. Because I am not that guy. Thank God by his grace. Amen. Amen. Continue, sister. Thank you. 65. Thou hast dwelt well with thy servant, O Lord, according unto thy word. Teach me good judgment and knowledge, for I have believed thy commandments. Before I was afflicted, I went astray, but now have I kept thy word. Thou art good, and doest good. Teach me thy statutes. The proud have forged a lie against me, but I will keep thy precepts with my whole heart. Their heart is as fat as grease, but I delight in thy law. It is good for me that I have been afflicted, that I might learn thy statutes. 
The law of thy mouth is better unto me than thousands of gold and silver. Amen. When the Lord is putting you through something, it's for your better, it's for your good. When you're going through an embarrassment situation, or you're going through a temptation, or when you have a, a day that you may slip, you have to remember, I rely on the Lord, and He's just showing me something. I'm not this big and mighty strong person. I have faults. I need the Lord daily. No matter how big you come in the Lord, you're st in the Lord, you're still under His grace and mercy. I'm a filthy rag, and I always will be. But in Jesus Christ, I'm more than victorious. In Amen. Jesus Christ, I'm wiped clean. In Jesus, in Jesus Christ, when they open up the Lamb's Book of Life and the Day of Judgment, because I, have, who I am in Jesus Christ, when I pass away into the next realm, when they look at me and say, "All right, on July 2nd, 1985." nothing there but blood. Amen. Amen. On June 7th of 1994, Amen. you did, uh, I can't even see it, it's washed under the blood. Amen. I can't be judged on something that I did in the past that I was forgiven for and that, that the Lord has given me grace and mercy for. And unlike someone of the world, now that judgment day when you're going to see Christ, they're going to read or show you line from line exactly what you did. And you're going to have to live through that again and put your head down in shame. By God's grace and mercy, everything is under the blood that you've given to Him. Amen. Amen. Thank you, sister. 73. Thy hands have made me and fashioned me. Give me understanding that I may learn thy commandments. They that fear thee will be glad when they see me because I have hope in thy word. I know, O Lord, that thy judgments are right, and that thou in faithfulness hast afflicted me. Let I pray thee, thy merciful kindness be for my comfort, according to thy word unto thy servant. Let thy tender mercies come upon me, that I may live, for thy law is my delight. Let the proud be ashamed, that they dwell perversely with me, without a cause, but I will meditate in thy precepts. Let those that fear thee turn unto me, and those that have known thy testimonies. Let my heart be sound in thy statutes, that I be not ashamed. My soul fainted for thy, for thy salvation, but I hope in thy word. Mine eyes fail for thy word, saying, When wilt thou comfort me? For I am become like a bottle in the smoke, Yet do I not forget thy statutes. How many are the days of thy servant? When wilt thou execute judgment on them that persecute me? The proud have digged pits for me, which are not after thy law. All thy commandments are faithful. They persecute me wrongfully, help thou me. They had almost consumed me upon earth, but I forsook not thy precepts. Quicken me after thy loving kindness, so shall I keep the testimony of thy mouth. Forever, O Lord, thy word is settled in heaven. Thy faithfulness is unto all generations. Thou hast established the earth and abided it. Amen. Hold on one second. Sorry, sister. But this reminds me, and the Holy Spirit brings to mind, is when Job was going through what he went through. He was a mighty child of God. The, 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 the Bible actually called him... He was, he, he had no blame. He was such a, just like, he would wake up early in the morning, he would go pray for himself. Not only would he pray for himself, but he would pray for his children, he would pray for his wife, he would pray for his cattle, he would pray. And the Lord put him through some stuff. And he never once ever turned his back and said, what? You know, he may question God, like, why do you put him through me all this for? But he never cursed him. He never said, well, God, I'm not, I, I don't like this punishment that you're putting him through. He reminded himself constantly who he was in the child of God. And in the end, the, the Bible says that Job was restored to twice as much as he was before. The Lord was showing Job, yes, you are a mighty man of God. You're a mighty man of Allah, but these friends of yours, they're not so great. Your wife, she's not so great either. And the children that, you, that you're praying against, every, that you pray for every day, look at their lifestyle. I want to show you what you have around you. And he put up through the punishment of the Lord because he's like, from dust they came, from dust I will turn again. 
If God created you to be his vessel, when he puts you through something, you have a mindset, well, I'm a servant of God. I'm not going to get mad at him. Paul never turned around and said, well, God, you know, I don't want to do this anymore. He actually worshipped and celebrated God when he was being tortured or when he was being ridiculed. He kept his mind on the kingdom. John the Baptist was tortured and killed because he was a sin pointer. He was doing his job. It's a, it's a joy in the Lord when we're put through certain things. And only through His Word, only through His Holy Spirit, only constant prayer and fasting and praying and worshiping, could we have that mindset in Christ that we have to remember that we're His servant. And that when He puts us through certain things, it's not to, re it's not to embarrass us, it's not to hurt us, it's to make you better and Amen. more like Him. Amen? Amen. Amen. Thank you, Sister. 91. They continue this day according to thine ordinances, for all are thy servants. Unless thy law had been my delight, I should then have perished in mine afflictions. I will never forget thy precepts, for with them thou hast quickened, quickened me. I am thine, save me, for I have sought thy precepts. The wicked have waited for me to destroy me, but I will consider thy testimonies. I have seen an end of all perfection, but thy commandment is exceeding broad. Oh, how love I thy precepts. It is my meditation all day. Thou, through thy precepts, hast made me wiser than mine enemies, that they are ever with me. I have more understanding than all my teachers, for thy testimonies are my meditation. I understand more than the ancients, because I keep thy precepts. I have refrained my feet from every evil way, that I might keep thy word. I have not departed from thy judgments, for thou hast taught me. How sweet are thy words unto my taste, yeah, sweeter than honey to my mouth. Through thy precepts I get understanding, therefore I hate every false way. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet, and a light unto my path. I have sworn, and I will perform it, that I will keep thy righteous judgments. I am afflicted very much. Quicken me, O Lord, according to thy word. Accept, I beseech thee, the free will offerings of my mouth, O Lord, and teach me thy precepts. My soul is continually in my hand, yet do I not forget thy law. The wicked have laid a snare for me, yet I err not from thy precepts. Thy testimonies have I taken as an heritage forever, for they are the rejoicing of my heart. I have inclined my heart to perform thy statue always, even unto the end. I hate vain thoughts, but thy law do I love. Thou art my hoping place and my shield. I hope in thy word. Depart from me, ye evildoers, for I will keep the commandments of my God. Uphold me according unto thy word, that I may live, and let me not be ashamed of my hope. Hold thou me up, and I shall be safe, and I will have respect unto thy statutes continually. Thou hast trodden down all them that err from thy statutes, for their deceit is falsehood. Thou puttest away all the wicked of the earth like droves. Therefore, I love thy testimony. My flesh trembleth for fear of thee, and I am afraid of thy judgments. I have done judgment and justice. Leave me not to mine oppressors. Be sure, be surety for thy servant for good. Let not the proud oppress me. Mine eyes fail for thy salvation, and for the word of thy righteousness. Deal with thy servant according to thy mercy and teach me thy statutes. Hold on one second, sister. I'm sorry. But what, what, what this reminds me of is when the Lord, the flesh is afraid sometimes of the Lord. And the Bible says that the fear of the Lord is wisdom. All of us, unfortunately, have been corrected. And sometimes the flesh is afraid of what it's about to go through because the darkness in your flesh is being exposed. More than once, unfortunately, I was pulled before a pastor and he had to give me a correction. 
and it's not fun. You're going to go in there, he's going to yell at you, he's going to discipline you, and you're afraid. And as you're going through it, you're like, oh, oh, you feel it. But at the end, he always gives you a word of God and he prays for you for restoration. So you leave there knowing I'm a better man of God because of what he's doing his job. I, now, if you have the wrong, wrong mindset, you're going to walk away from that meeting and go, who is this guy to teach me something? Who is? That's what the flesh wants to say. The flesh is afraid because the flesh is darkness and it's going to, the light is going to expose what you did and what you're doing wrong. And if you have the mindset of a Christian, you have a mindset of, I thank God for this correction, you're going to welcome it even though it hurts. And you know that when you walk away, I am this much better for it. And I'm not going to make that mistake. And, and you thank you, thank you, Pastor, for bringing this to my attention. I thank you for your obedience. It's not easy to correct somebody sometimes. It's not an easy thing. And I never understood what he meant when, when you're correcting someone. You never look at their face. You look past them. You're looking at the sin or the spirit that's affecting them, not the man. But when you leave that office and after the prayer of restoration, that spirit is cast out and now you're free and free indeed. Amen? Amen. Continue, sister. Thank you. 125. I am thy servant. Give me understanding that I may know thy testimonies. It is time for thee, Lord, to work, that they have made void thy law. Therefore, I love thy commandments above gold, yeah, above fine gold. Therefore, I esteem all thy precepts concerning all things to be right, and I hate every false way. Thy testimonies are wonderful. Therefore, doth my soul keep them. The entrance of thy words giveth light. It giveth understanding unto the simple. I open my mouth and pant it. Do I long for thy commandments? Look thou upon me, and be merciful unto me, as thou useth to do unto those that love thy name. Order my steps in thy word, and let not any iniquity have dominion over me. Deliver me from the oppression of man, so I will keep thy precepts. Make thy face to shine upon thy servant, and teach me thy statutes. Rivers of water run down mine eyes, because they keep not thy law. Righteous art thou, O Lord, and upright are thy judgments. Thy testimonies that thou hast commanded are righteous and very faithful. My zeal hath consumed me, because my enemies have forgotten thy words. Thy word is very pure, therefore thy servant loveth it. I am small and despised, yet do not I forget thy precepts. Thy righteousness is an everlasting righteousness, and thy law is the truth. Trouble and anguish have taken hold of me, yet thy commandments are my delights. The righteousness of thy testimonies is everlasting. Give me understanding, and I shall live. I cried with my whole heart, Hear me, O Lord, I will keep thy statutes. I cried unto thee, Save me, and I will keep thy testimonies. I prevented the dawning of the morning and cried and hoped in thy word. Mine eyes prevent the night watches that I might meditate in thy word. Hear my voice according unto thy loving kindness. O Lord, quicken me according to thy judgment. They draw up nigh that follow after mischief. They are far from thy law. Thou art near, O Lord, and all thy commandments are true. Concerning thy testimonies, I have known of old that thou hast founded them forever. Consider mine affliction and deliver me, for I do not forget thy law. Plead my cause and deliver me. Quicken me according to thy word. Salvation is far from the wicked, for they seek not thy statutes. Great are thy tender mercies, O Lord. Quicken me according to thy judgments. Many are the persecutors and mine enemies, yet do I not decline from thy testimonies. 158. I beheld the transgressors and was grieved, because they kept not thy word. Consider how I love thy precepts. Quicken me, O Lord, according to thy loving kindness. Thy word is true from the beginning, 
and every one of thy righteous judgments endure forever. Princes have persecuted me without a cause, but my heart standeth in awe of thy word. I rejoice at thy word as one that findeth great spoil. I hate and abhor a poor lion, but thy law do I love. Seven times a day do I praise thee because of thy righteous judgments. Great peace have they which love thy law, and nothing shall offend them. Lord, I have hoped for thy salvation and done thy commandments. My soul hath kept thy testimonies, and I love them exceedingly. I have kept thy precepts and thy testimonies, for all my ways are before thee. Let my cry come near before thee, O Lord. Give me understanding according to thy word. Let my supplication come before thee. Deliver me according to thy word. My lips shall utter praise when thou hast taught me thy statutes. My tongue shall speak of thy word, for all, for all thy commandments are righteousness. Let thine hand help me, for I have chosen thy precepts. I have longed for thy salvation, O Lord, and thy law is my delight. Let my soul live, and it shall praise thee, and let thy judgments help me. I have gone astray like a lost sheep. Seek thy servant, for I do not forget thy commandments. Amen. Uh, Sister, I want to thank you because I know that was a long read there. And the only thing I ask is that you memorize that by the end of the day. <laughs> <laughs> but I thank you for your patience. Amen. The next reading is Isaiah 55, 8 through 11. My thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. 10. As the rain and the snow come down from heaven and do not return to it without watering the earth and making it bud and flourish, so that it yields seed for the sower and bread for the eater. 11. So is my word that goes out from my mouth. It will not return to me empty, but will accomplish what I desire and achieve the purpose for which I sent it. Amen. Thank you, my sister. It, what, the word of God, we have to constantly recognize the power of the Lord and the word of God. When you speak something into existence, it will happen. So if you say, brother, you're healed by the name of Jesus, that affliction that you had is no longer with you. you. You're speaking things into existence because of the Word of God. And one good thing that we know as Christians is the Word of God can never lie. So when you speak it in faith, it will happen. And especially the Word says, when two or more gather in His name, if you're praying in agreement and you're using the Word, you have power and you have authority. Bless you. But one of the things that we have to constantly remind ourselves in the Word it's okay as a child of God to remind God His promises. You have to know your right in the kingdom. Your child will remind you, Hey, Daddy, can you just make my favorite lunch today? Can you put this in the bag? This is what I, you know, yesterday you gave me this and I didn't really like it. So He wants you to have that communication, fellowship, and obedience. He wants you to be able to remind you, Lord, this is what your word says. Lord, this is what your promise was to me. It's not that He never forgets it. But he loves that communication, and you're able to tell him that you speak to him, and you have the fear of him as your father. Amen? And that's what the Word of God is. It's, it helps us not only to correct ourselves, or correct our lives, or to correct others, but it also it guides us, it leads us, it never leaves nor forsakes us. But the Word of God is also a way to constantly be in communication with the Father. He speaks to you through His Word. The Creator of the universe... The same God that made every ocean, that made every animal, that made every insect, and he knows what they're all doing all at the same exact time, will also speak to you. He'll take time to speak just to you. Just to think about all the things that God has going on in one moment. He tells the oceans where to stop. 
He's holding the foundations of the world up with his hand. He's telling the stars where they have to go. He's watching the lion hunt. He's watching, and but all of that going on, and that's why his thoughts are not your thoughts. You can't even comprehend on what's going through God's mind. And not only does he know what's going on now, he knows everything that you did in the past or what happened 10,000 years ago. He knows everything that's gonna happen 10,000 in the future. All of those things that are going on yet, he takes the time to say, Brother Emmanuel is written on my hand, and I hear him, I know him, I know his voice, he's my child. I have his name right here. He's close to my heart. In fact, I call him the apple of my eye. All that stuff that's going on, he loves you that much that he's gonna sp spend attention on you. And he's gonna use his word to communicate with you, amen? Amen. 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 I never ever want anyone to ever forget who we are in God, what we mean to him, he gave his only son to die for you. Us that are parents, how hard would that be to take, you know what, think about that for a second. That's how much he loves you. Amen? Amen. Introduction. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Men who recognize the efficacy of the word of God by allowing his will to be done in their lives have always been beaten, all others and excelled. Joseph went from slavery to an important leader in Egypt because he preferred the word of God, Amen. obeyed him and was testified of by Pharaoh to be a man in whom the spirit of God is. Genesis 41 verse 38. Daniel ruled in Babylon and prospered because he believed and trusted in the word of God continually. An excellent spirit was found in him. Daniel 6.3 Hananiah, Maziel, and Ezra, in obedience to the word of God, refused to worship any other gods besides the God of Israel and rose from the fairy furnace to governorship positions. Moses forsook Pharaoh's palace and against all odds, obeyed God's word to deliver Israel from Egypt. Each of these personalities portrays the supremacy of God's word. Obeying God's word always produces a result that far exceeds the highest that can be achieved through any other way, thought or decision. No wonder God says in Isaiah 55, eight to nine, for my thoughts are not your thoughts, Neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. Amen. Amen. As our sister just read, we were given a couple of examples of men of God that had to be put into certain situations sometimes. And they had a they had a they didn't let what was going around them interfere them. They didn't let the uh, even a command from the kingdom, oh, you can't pray, or you can't do this. They kept their mind focused on God. They didn't seek revenge. Joseph could have easily you know, took revenge or spoke against things or complained or murmured. He could have said, you know what, these my brothers, they deserve all to die. Just let them go. You know, but his mind was focused on God and God's kingdom. He never, the flesh wants you to react to something that somebody else is doing to you. Sometimes, and in fact, all the time, you would, you, you kind of have to like not pay attention to the attack, but you keep focused on what God is doing with that attack. You keep focused on Him, and then He'll take care of everything. As you walk through the valley in the shadow of death, as you're walking through it, there's people that are going to be on the right attacking you, on the left attacking you, behind you attacking you. But if you keep your eyes focused on Christ, He's going to lead you through it. Amen? Amen. And all these mighty men of God had that in mind. Just think of if you put yourself in Moses' shoes for one second. You had a man that could even speak clearly. He stuttered. He had a speaking problem. But yet, he had to go before a, the king of, 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 of Egypt, the Pharaoh, and say, thus says the Lord. Can you imagine being, that's why the Lord says, 
I will use your weaknesses for my strength. Can you imagine having a speech impediment? Because you know that when you stutter or you have a problem, and, and some of us have been delivered from those type of things, it's, it's a confidence thing. But when you rely on the Lord, he'll make you speak boldly. You will not have any hesitation. You give the, the message of the Lord and you walk away. That's what God does when you're a child of God. That's why you can't say, well, my thoughts are not, his, his thoughts are not your thoughts. Because in the physical, I would never have the ability to go before a king and say, you're going to do this, you're going to let my people go, and this is going to happen to you. Without God and that boldness, could any of us have that boldness to do that? None of us. And that's why to be a mighty man of God, a mighty man of valor, you just have the faith in the Lord. You know who you are. You're not going to let things influence on who you are as a child of God. Amen? Amen. Amen. Lesson objectives. Number one, to know what God's word is. Two, to comprehend why the written word of God should be appreciated. And number three, to understand the relevance of God's word. Amen? Bible truth, question number one. What is God's word? Amen. 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 The Bible is God's written word and promise to men. It has given it has been given to guide, instruct, and comfort man in life's journey. From the various symbols with which the Bible has been illustrated, we see the need to study, know, and do the word of God. Like a two-edged sword, Hebrew 4, verse 12, the Bible pierces the heart of the era. Like a hammer, Jeremiah 23, verse 29, it is powerful, amen, and breaks the resistance of the era. Like a fire, Jeremiah 20, verse 9, 23, 29, it is a burning world consuming the dross in the era, while like a seed, in 1 Peter 1, verse 23, the Bible is a living word regenerating the era. Amen. Amen. Moreover, in branding the Bible as a mirror, its ability to faithfully reveal the individual to itself is portrayed. James 1, 23 to 25. Hold on one second, brother. That is a very powerful statement. The Word of God and the Holy Spirit it's like looking in a mirror and you get to see all the things that is wrong with you. He'll show you this is wrong. And you know, and in, in the physical, and I think Pastor was mentioning it last week, when something's wrong, when you look in a mirror, and for a woman, if her makeup is a little off, she's gonna take a little tissue and wipe it, she's gonna make it perfect. And that's what the word of God in our life is like. When you look in the mirror, and, and the, the word of God is gonna change you, he's gonna fix you, he's gonna straighten your tie out, he's gonna like, now go. When you first looked at me, you weren't right. Amen? In, in, in the world, we have people that do that for us too. When you leave the house, your wife is going to say, Brother, do me a favor, just let me dress you from now on because the way this ain't working. And I care about you. I don't want you to go out with that green shirt and your purple shoes. They just don't go. Amen. Well, let me do it. And because of love, she knows what's right for you or he was right for, for you. The Lord loves you, so he's going to correct you. He's going to constantly be fixing you. Amen. And that's what the Word of God does. And it regenerates us. That's what our brother said. It restores you. Amen. Because the world, when you're going through it, when you're being corrected, the Bible says the Lord is going to prune you. He has to cut something off. When something's not right, sister, he's going to cut it off. It's going to hurt. But he's there to take it, patch it up, fix it, and make it better. Amen. And that's what we have to thank him. When he cuts something out of us, it's for our benefit. And that's how we keep on thinking of the Word of God. Amen? Amen. Continue, brother. Moreover, in branding the Bible as a mirror, its ability to faithfully reveal the individual to itself is portrayed. James 1, 20 to 25. The same word is said to be a lamp and a light. Psalm 119, verse 105, illuminating Hebrew 5, 12 to 14. One and and First Corinthians three verse two. The Bible is nourishment, feeding the soul. The Word of God therefore convicts, regenerates, reveals, 
illuminates and nourishes the individual. It is profitable for doctrine, amen, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. Amen. And that's, that's one of the most important things that my brother just said. The Bible, the Word of God, is instruction. It's instruction on how to live your life. Amen. And it doesn't matter. That's what the brilliance of the Lord is. The Bible was written roughly about 1,800 years ago, but yet it still pertains to my life in this present day. Amen. The Word of God could penetrate. God doesn't care about technology. He doesn't care about the Internet. He doesn't. He, his Word knew that all those things would be here. And it could, it could correct you. In the future, the Lord's word will still correct you. Because the word of God doesn't change. But it's meant to change you. Amen? Amen. Thank you, brother. Second Timothy 3, verse 16. There is need to study to show oneself approved unto God. As Paul instructed Timothy. Second Timothy 2, 15 to 16. Until you receive them with meekness, the engrafted word, which is able to save your soul. Yes, one verse 12, you remain dead in sin and trespasses. Ephesians 2 verse 1. Therefore, the word of God could be said to be that internal will, which when we know and obey, we lead, we stay alive, grow, and all the works of our hand, and it's prosper. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. John 1 verse 1. Was made flesh and dwelt among us, full of grace, and truth. This is a personification of the word of God and is Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. God has magnified his word above his name. Psalm 138 verse 2. The Lord says of his word in Isaiah 55 verse 11, it shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing where to I send it. This is infallibility, which is God exclusive reserve forever, O Lord, the word is settled in heaven. Psalm 119, verse 89. Therefore, God's word is God. Amen. 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 Thank you, brother. And the question today is what what is God's word? God's word is your ability and while you're on earth that you can speak certain things out and correct them. God's word is also something that could correct you. God's word is living, and it's constantly doing something in your life as a believer. Amen? Amen. There's a scripture that we want that I'm just going to briefly go over, and it was in Jeremiah, and I just wanted to, to seep into, into your soul. It's Jeremiah 23, 29. Is not my word like a fire, declares the Lord, and like a hammer that breaks a rock into pieces. So the word of God, no matter what's presented before you, when you speak the word of God, it could be look like a giant mountain, but the word of God will crush that mountain and say, hey, mountain, you must move. Amen. You must get out of here. The word of God gives you power. And it also could crush things. People speak something against you, and I say, uh, return to sender. No weapon against me shall prosper. And you, you speak things. So when, you have, when a rock is thrown at you, I have the ability to throw God's word at that rock and dismantle it before it even hits me. Any arrow that shot at you, I have the ability in God's word to say, return to sender. No weapon against me shall prosper. And you speak certain things. When the enemy comes against you, the Bible says, you tell God what his word says. Or you tell the devil, this is what the word of God says. Amen? Amen. And that's why you have to know the word. You have to know it. And that's why when Mama Gladys preached this morning, you, pre you, you, you meditated on it day and night. Why do we meditate on the, on, on, the, on the Word of God? So that in the battle, when it's time to act, you don't have to go sit here and look up. You have to look up, you know, and meanwhile you're getting hit with arrows left and right, and it takes you five minutes. You know what? Oh, oh yeah, it's highlighted in my Bible here. The Bible says this and this and this. When you're a child of God and the Word is in you, it just comes out. Amen. You're sharpened. It's a sharpened two-edged sword. You're ready for battle. As a Christian soldier, you, all your weapons are sharpened. Your uniform is always on. Your, your feet are sandaled with readiness. I have the helmet of salvation on my head. I have the breastplate of righteousness. But I have to live the word of God. So I have to wear truth around my waist like a belt. When you have all the weapons, when you have the gifts of the Lord working on your side, that's what the word is in your life. Amen. It equips you spiritually. Amen. Amen. 
Know who you are as a child of God. And more importantly is know what the Word of God could do. The Bible, the Word of God is instructions in every area of your life. There is nothing that He can't fix. There's nothing that He can't accomplish or you can't accomplish through the Word of God. Amen? He can fix all things. He knows all things. Question number two. Why should the Bible be appreciated? Thank you, sister. The Bible, also called the scriptures or the writings or the word of God, is an authoritative revelation written in the form of God's nature and purpose. It comprises 66 books from Genesis to Revelation, 39 in the Old Testament and 27 in the New Testament. They are all written by the same author the Holy Spirit, and have one message. There is no other book like it. It is a belief that between 36 and 40 different persons were used, written over a period of some 1,600 years by inspired men, such as shepherds, kings, fishermen, and philosophers. They never contradicted one another, but all are in the perfect agreement and harmony. Amen. Hold on one second. Sorry. This is proof right here. We know as men and women, if you put 10 people in a room, they can't agree on anything. Well, you know, I think this should be put in the book. No, I think my idea is better. No, I think you should change this and take this out. Not only is God's word in perfect harmony of right now, it took 1,800 years for the Holy Spirit to write it through his vessels. And God is no respecter of man. So never think, oh, oh, you know, just because I'm... Um, a shepherd, the God's not going to use me. The Bible, the book says, shepherds, kings, fishermen, and philosophers. So we had people in the world that are supposedly at the top, and people that are the laborers on the bottom, he had write his word. So the, the, the word of God is written through men's vessels who are yielded to the Lord. And there is no contradiction. There's order in the house of the Lord. So when the Lord gives the shepherd the instructions, he's going to write it exactly the way that God is telling him. Because God is writing the story. And even someone in the world who may be an important as a lawyer or a doctor, they humble themselves and say, you know what, this is what the word of God says. Not what I think it should say, and I don't think that sounds like a good idea. So the, the men and women of God are humble. And these vessels are the ones that wrote the Bible. These vessels are the ones that wrote all the instruction. And if you go from the beginning to the end, it's all about Jesus. It's all about, and, and, and it tells and interacts, and, and it's weaved together. Amen? And that's why the Bible, certain parts of it that says, this person begot this person, and this person. It could go on for three pages because the, the Lord is written in a certain way that you could track all the way from the beginning, all the way to the end. It's a line that the Lord knew. It is impossible for man 500 years ago to write something about 500 years into the future and have it come out perfect. It's impossible. But God, things, all things are possible in God. Amen. Amen. And I just want us to get that in our heads. Amen. And that's why the Bible should be appreciated. Because only God could write it. Only God could be the Amen. author of such a book. Amen? Amen? The Bible was originally written in Hebrew, Aramaic, and Greek. Moses, writing 1,600 years before the last book of the Bible was penned, was just as modern and scientific as Paul's, John's, or any other per or any of the others present-day investigator. All scripture is given by inspiration of God, 2 Timothy 3.16. Man, by himself, could not have written the Bible. Yet man has tried to ban, burn, and bury the Bible. It is alive, amen. 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 And available to preach the funeral of any person or nation who wants to do away with it. This infallible word of God will be the standard of judgment on the last day, John 12, 48. Let us read the Bible daily and obey the message. God's people must handle this book carefully and reverently because it is God's book to us. Let us rejoice that God has spoken and endeavor by the power of the Holy Spirit to work in the light of his revelations. Amen. Amen. The devil hates the book. The devil hates the Bible. He hates the word of God. And he's constantly, as it says, trying to destroy it. 
And the way that the Lord proves himself over and over is no matter how many times it was burned, no matter how many times it was stolen, no matter how many times the people come against it and say, well, this isn't true, and that's not true, and it, but yet it still lives. Because when something's alive, something is full of life, cannot be killed. He could, right now, somebody, a person, person, thing, could destroy every single Bible, everything written, ever, ever, and but the Word of God is alive. They'll just use this yielded vessel and they'll rewrite the Bible exactly the way it was before. Because God is alive and the Word is alive, it cannot ever be destroyed. And proof that the, that the Bible is the Word of God, it is all, we just read, our sister just read, it's been translated about 10 different times in 10 different languages and written by thousands and thousands of men and women. But yet, it turns out exactly the same every single time. Because God is writing it. Amen. And no matter how much that the devil tries to destroy, give give God the glory. Amen. And this is why I appreciate the Bible. Even though that the Bible over history has been constantly destroyed and constantly stolen and ridiculed, what is the number one selling book of the world since they recorded such facts? The Bible. The Bible outsells every. So when you have, I don't know, what famous authors of. Up there, this book's the top seller today. The Bible outsells him 10 to 1. And always will. No matter what cruise ship you go on, no matter what hotel you go to, no matter where you are in the world, there's a drawer with a Bible in it. Amen. And, and the Word of God cannot be destroyed. And that's why I, one of the many reasons why I appreciate the Bible is the more that the devil tries to destroy it, the more life it becomes. Amen? Amen. Amen. Does anyone have a contribution, anything they want to say? Anyone? Question number three. What is the re what is the relevance of the word of God? Amen. Amen. Question three. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. John 1 verse 1. Words are a means whereby we can communicate one with another. Jesus is called the Word of God. It is God's means of communicating with His creations. Whether in the natural or spiritual, God sp speaks through his, his, his Son, the Word. In nature, we learn something about God, but it is still through the Word. For by the Word of God, the heavens were made. All things were made by Him. Amen. In the spiritual sense, Jesus is preeminently the Word, God's only means of communicating Himself to us. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one cometh unto the Father but by me. John 14, verse 6. Scripture have it that no man had seen God at any time, the one begotten Son, which is the bosom of the Father. He had declared, revealed him, John 1 verse 18, Jesus is our mediator, our savior, and our new and living way to God. In appreciation of the relevance of God's word, the psalmist asked God to open his eyes so that he could see the marvelous blessings of God in the world. Amen. Amen. Psalm 119, 17 to 18. God's word to him was a lamb to his feet and the light to his path, verse 105. This is true not only for the psalmist, but for all believers. God's word is settled in heaven and is attested to by his faithfulness, verse 89 to 91. The psalmist declared his delight for God's wonderful word, which gives light, verse 129 to 131. Most of the laws of men and government originate from the Ten Commandments. Amen. Yeah. Thus making the Bible the foundation of all laws. Amen. Moreover, most religious and even occultic bodies try to justify their existence by quoting sections of the Bible, making men think they are authentic, yet they are only have a form of godliness but deny the power thereof. Second Timothy 3 verse 5. May we this day avail ourselves of him as revealed in his written word. May the Spirit of God use the word of God to change the people of God. Amen. 
the choir like the psalmist, I will not forget that word. Amen. Verse 16. The ability of the word of God to transform us is as potent as ever. Amen. Amen. Thank you, brother. And this is why the Lord's word is so relevant. Because in every step of our lives, the word of God is with us to, to lead us, to guide us. And it's also, it's relevant because there is nothing that could go on in the world without the Bible knowing already what's going to happen or how to correct that situation, how to fix the situation. It's also relevant because the Word of God was there from the very beginning. Jesus is called the Word. So the Bible says in the beginning, the Holy Spirit hovered over the waters. He was there. And me and my brother, we were talking about this the other day. Even in the Old Testament, if you look up in Genesis, Genesis 1 verse 26, it says, then God said, and I want us to, to listen to what it says, let us make man kind in our image, in our likeness. Who's God talking to? He's Jesus. talking to the Word. He's talking to His Son. He's having a discussion in heaven. Let us. He's making a decision. So Jesus represents His Word. The Holy Spirit represents the movement. And they're one. And God, that's why they're all one. They're one entity. So it's relevant because he's not only there from the very, very beginning, he's going to be there to the very, very end. Amen. All through the Bible, it mentions the Lord, it mentions Jesus, it mentions the works, it mentions lessons, corrections, uh, tribulations. So it's relevant because no matter where you are in your life, no matter where your children are or in their life, no matter where the pastor is in her life or the choir is in their life, the Word of God is relevant to every part of it. Amen? Amen. It's also relevant also because it keeps the devil in check. Jesus had to know the Word of God. Jesus meditated on the Word of God. Even when the devil came to tempt him, he, the, the, Jesus had to remind the devil, no, this is what the Word, I don't live on bread alone. I don't do that. He had to tell, he had to speak the Word. And the devil, you resist the devil and he shall flee. So it's relevant as a child of God, the Word of God is very important. The Bible is important because you get to tell the devil exactly where he has to go. You can tell him through Jesus Christ, you are under my feet. Without the Word of God and without the Bible, the, the devil will make mincemeat out of you. But because of who you are in God, because of the relevance of the Bible, because of the relevance, the, the, because of the importance of the Word of God in your life, it never changes. The same word of God, the same instructions that he gave Daniel and to Samson and to David and to Samuel, to, he gave to us also. And it will be relevant from the beginning, like I said, to the end. Amen? There were many, many powerful, as Mama Gladys always reminds us, I'm going to remind you today, go home and meditate on all these words and scriptures that were given to us today. Amen? Amen. Amen. Daily living application. God is his word. Therefore, the only way to know God is know his word and live by it. So you're going to put it into action. You're going to constantly use it. It's a tool for you to use constantly. This means knowing, believing, and doing the written word. The Bible, as well as knowing and believing on the word, made flesh. Our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. There is no other name by which man can be saved except by the name of Jesus Christ. It is therefore in men's own interest to hear and do the word of God, because it is quick and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, and is a discerner of the intents of the heart. Hebrews 4.12. Amen? Amen. Amen. Today's memory verse is Psalm 119. 130. 130. The entrance of thy words giveth life, it giveth understanding to the simple. Amen? Let's say it again together with power. Psalm 19, 119, 130. The entrance of thy words giveth life, it giveth understanding to the simple.